will turn our grief into action. We have to have action. This includes allowing well-trained and certified school personnel to carry concealed firearms. Bump stocks, we're writing that out. I'm writing that out myself. I don't care if Congress does it or not. I'm writing it out myself. Don't worry about the NRA. They're on our side. You guys, half of you are so afraid of the NRA. There's nothing to be afraid of. We must pursue common sense measures that protect the constitutional rights of law-abiding Americans while keeping guns out of the hands of those who pose a threat to themselves and to others. And we're going to have to start talking about mental institutions, because a lot of the folks in this room close their mental institutions. President Trump talking with about 35 governors at the White House today. A, a big give and take uh, lasted some time in front of the cameras, as you can hear, about school safety and guns. This has uh, new polls out from USA Today and Suffolk, uh, most recent, saying should schools be required to have metal detectors at uh, point of entry? There you see 6227, armed police officer on site, and there you see that, 58 percent. When it comes to curbing mass shootings, which is more important? Uh, you see the breakdown, restricting access to guns, improving mental health care, both. Uh, a lot of talking about different possible solutions on school safety. Let's bring in our panel. Steve Hayes, editor-in-chief for The Weekly Standard. Molly Hemingway, senior editor at The Federalist. And Dan Balls, national political correspondent at The Washington Post. Uh, Dan, let me start with you. You know, Congress is saying they're going to put some kind of legislative package in. It, when you hear the president talking about, of all things, the NRA and you shouldn't be worried about it, do you think that there is a chance that some something might come together? I think it's still going to be difficult. Um, I think they're still miles apart on some of these issues. I think it will be a, a partly determined by how much people try to do. Um, if they can go leaner and simpler, maybe they can do something on background checks. But beyond that, I don't know what they're going to be able to do. These standoffs uh, have existed for a long time. The NRA has been very successful in blocking efforts in the past after other shootings. I think a lot of it will have to do with what role the president chooses to play and how effective he is. Apparently, he had lunch at the White House with some NRA leadership, including Wayne LaPierre uh, and others. Um, Molly. I think it's kind of interesting that we're even talking about gun control as a response to something where the more we learn about it, we're just learning about a series of epic, catastrophic government failures at every level. You know, we've heard about the FBI being notified about this person. The school failed. The school resource officer failed. The sheriff's department failed. Dozens of times being told about this person and doing nothing to stop. I mean, in one case, the shooter himself notified authorities that he was a threat and nothing was done. And the idea that we would respond to this story of epic government failure by restricting law-abiding Americans right to keep and bear arms, something protected in the Second Amendment, is very confusing to a lot of people, and particularly with the details of this particular case. You heard Governor Scott and the President talking about this um, sheriff's deputy, a couple of them outside the school, and also about the warnings that were missed, as Molly mentioned. Take a listen. The local sheriff's department, they've got to be completely transparent. We have to do a thorough investigation, and whoever didn't do their job has to be held accountable. I got to watch some deputy sheriffs performing this weekend. They weren't exactly uh, Medal of Honor winners. I could only take responsibility for what I knew about. I exercise my, my due diligence. I've given amazing leadership to this agency. Amazing. And uh, of course, I won't resign. There are calls now, including the Florida House Speaker, uh, for the Broward County Sheriff to resign. Um, what about this, Steve? Well, he has not, in fact, given amazing leadership. I would say he's been pretty much the opposite of what you'd expect of a leader in a time of crisis, responding to some of the things that, that Molly raised. I mean, there were failures again and again and again, not just in the last few minutes, not just in the heat of the moment, but going back months, there were failures, and I think his department is responsible for them. One of the reasons that we're talking about gun control in the aftermath of this is because President Trump is talking about gun control in the aftermath of this. And I think Dan is exactly right. A lot of what happens from this point forward will depend on how much President Trump wants to expend political capital to make something happen. Now, he said that he was working on bump stocks. He doesn't care if they do it legislatively. He's happy to do it administratively. There are two other places where he talked about making some uh, changes. Background checks is the first one in the age to purchase on long guns is the second. The White House seemed to, in Sarah Sanders' press briefing today, take a small step back from that, saying, 
you know, the president, while he may have said this, this is still being discussed. It's part of a broader discussion on this. Does that mean the White House is actually stepping back from these proposals that the president offered, or are they just actually making a tactical play to include it in a broader set of negotiations? A number of governors uh, stepped up, uh, said that uh, a couple of them said that they didn't feel comfortable with the teachers being armed, including uh, Washington's governor, Insk Inslee. Now, I know that you have suggested arming our teachers. And no, I just no, I no, just, not your teachers. Not your, arming yeah. a small portion that are very gun adept, that truly know how to handle. So it would just be a very small group of people that are very gun adept. I've listened to the first grade teachers that don't want to be pistol packing first grade teachers. I've listened to law enforcement who have said they don't want to have to train teachers as law enforcement agencies, which takes about six months. So I just suggest we need a little less tweeting here, a little more listening. Uh, Dan, what about this? I mean, is it gaining traction or taking away? I, Fred, I think it's going to be a state-by-state -state thing. Uh, there are a number of governors. I was covering the governors all weekend, and in talking to them, uh, there are a number of governors in both parties who are uncomfortable with this idea. But we should point out some of them are already doing it. But Texas some are already doing others. it. And, and we talked with, with Governor Abbott in Texas about what they have done, and I think there's, they said, almost a fifth of the schools there have people who are armed. Um, this is something that in part will have to do with the culture of each of those states, the culture of, of the use of guns and how comfortable people are with it. But there are a number of governors who say, uh, including Republican governors, adding, adding guns to this environment is not what they want to see in schools. But we'll see how this debate goes forward state by state. Yeah. Speaking of culture, I want to play one more soundbite. Uh, this is from Kentucky's governor. We have to talk about the culture in this society. And when we mock and ridicule the very foundational principles that this nation was built upon, where you treat people the way you'd want to be treated, where you respect human life, where you respect the dignity of women and of children and of people who we have increasingly degraded in our society. This culture of death is becoming pervasive. Hard to legislate something like that, but he was talking about using the bully, pul bully pulpits in all of these states. It's hard to legislate, but it's so important. It's something that all Americans can do, is think about how they are handling their own families, what they're doing to look out for their own family members, helping out people in their community who have greater needs, whether they be mental health or otherwise. It's not an easy fix. It's not going to get headlines, but it's actually what this country needs.